was your day. Okay. Glad you could join us today. Okay. We okay. had it with no time to play, with no time to wait. So we're gonna keep up the pace. Okay. Hey, uh, most likely, likely. y'all don't know about IT. Nope. I mean, like most of the old folks, they don't. Uh, yeah, know. I, I get what you're saying, bro. You know what I'm saying? Today we're talking IT. Yeah. Okay. Hey, yeah. Today we're talking IT. Yeah. All right. Ooh. We're yeah. gonna keep it live. Okay. Learning yeah. here is like hey. when we're talking hey. IT. Hey. IT. Yeah. Hey. Uh. Today we're talking IT. No, your computers. Okay. This for the viewers. Today we're talking IT. We had a tutors. We okay. got the humor. Okay. Yeah. Today we're uh. talking IT. Okay. Learning here uh. is like learning here when is likely. Uh. IT. So let's IT. start IT. Yeah. Currently. There are rumors and falsified reports circulating on social media about the novel coronavirus. For accurate information and updates, visit the Instagram and Facebook page of the Health Promotion Unit or the Ministry's YouTube channel at Synkits Health Promotion Unit or Synkits HPU. You may also visit online the World Health Organization or the Caribbean Public Health Agency. For further contact information, please contact the Ministry of Health for more info at 467-1172 or 467-1108. You can also be sure to follow the news to get the local COVID-19 updates. Let's all try to remain healthy and well. This is a message from the Ministry of Health and the National Emergency Management Agency. To the show that y'all know that I am kind of terrible at the number one show on Win FM. Oh, hold on, Sanjay in the studio. What? For real? You serious? Yeah. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I just heard that we aren't actually the number one show on Win FM. Sadly, but I can indeed confirm that we are a show on Win FM. So, everybody, welcome back to Let's Talk IT. It's your host with the most jokes, who can roast, so give him a toast, got the most flow. I don't even like to boast. Here we go. Whoa. Ooh, that was kind of clean. That's fire. Okay. Um, I'm here in the studio at WinFM to those looking on, and I'm here with the boy Sanjiv, who's also helping us out. Sanjiv, say something to the people. Yo, 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 you know what's popping today? Um, oh. Let's let's not say what's popping, all right? Let's, let's not do that. Let's not do that. And, uh... Let's show uh, the people in the booth real quick. Uh, we got the marvelous Dr. Ricardo Neal back here again. Mr. Neal, how you doing, people? How you doing? Oh, Mr. Neal, how you doing? How you doing? Um, all right, all right, all right. Um, we also got Anthony G. Tall here. Anthony back again. Uh, Y'all might have known him from episode one, vanished for every other episode, but he's here to do something, I guess. Anthony, how you doing? Mm. Interesting, interesting. And we have a face that we have, well, a voice, because y'all ain't really listening. You're seeing, but you know, Janiqua Esdale. Janiqua, you may speak, you may speak. Hi, how have you been? (laughs) I've been busy with COVID stuff, so sorry. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah, that's okay. Well, um, what we say about that? That's just how radio shows go. I'm joking. It's your host, Naeem Richardson, and welcome back to Let's Talk IT, the show with the intention to educate the listeners of the world of information technology. Now, I can't go any further without giving a shout out to our sponsors, IITAE, the International Information Technology Academy of Excellence and SKNRA, the St. Kitts and Nevis Robotics Association. Thanks to Sanjiv, I actually was able to memorize, I'm joking, they're just in the script, of what I have for the acronyms. And I'll be honest, sometimes I get scared that they'll cut me out like a surgery because I'm a little too jokey for my own good sometimes, you know? And so if you hear a new voice coming on the show, like, hello, everyone, and welcome back to the most distinguished, sophisticated show on um, WinFM, Let's Talk IT. Just just know I got cut because I'm already telling you guys that they might cut me. Mr. (laughs) Mr. Neil, they might cut me? They might cut me if I I keep making too many jokes? No, no, no. no (laughs) Uh, You see how that laugh was? I I don't really trust it, but let's just hope. Let's just hope. Uh, 
Anyways, last time we had a very interesting episode. Due to all the pro-black movements around the world, I felt like it'd be appropriate to speak about some positivity surrounding black people. So we talked about a few black inventors that helped change the world of technology as we know it. Some examples are Sarah Boone in 1892 with the improved ironing board. Mary Van Britten Brown, yes, she has a very long name, with the first security system in 1966. Garrett Morgan in 1923 with the invention of the three light traffic light. Um, let's just see. Let's uh, go to our guest real quick. Anthony, did you tune in well, when that was going on? Don't lie to me. Don't lie to me because I can look you in the face. Don't lie to me. All right, all right, all right, all right. Okay, I see where you're coming from, mate. But, like, to be honest, I was, like, half asleep. I mean... Don't get me wrong. I was listening to the, the the broadcast. I was listening. But, like, I got caught up, man, to be honest. <laughs> um, I see, I see, I see. You catch where I'm coming from? Um, no. <laughs> Mr. Neil. <laughs> yes. Anything. I mean, you you are an IT teacher at uh, the CFPC College, and you run two organizations with Box. IT. Mm-hmm. So uh, you learn anything new, or did I just say things that you already know? No, um, I think I'm, um, yeah, I'm fully aware of, of what's going on. <laughs> so, so, yeah, I'm fully aware of what's going on. But it is actually refreshing for the public to know uh, because one of, the, one of the drawback is that sometimes the public doesn't know um, how, how, how involved um, we are in. Can you hear me clearly? All right. Right. So, mm-hmm. ah. So um, it was actually refreshing last week to know that we were able to touch on those topics in terms of um, expounding and let the public know um, that you know we we are uh, we we are actually inventors. We develop stuff. We mm-hmm. we uh, market stuff, and and it is there. But you know, um, sometimes the younger folks coming up they do not know about it, and so I want to you know make sure that they are aware. So that is what I t- I, I take away from last week's. Um, Sure, and even some of the older folks too. You know, let them know what 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 went on in the past. You know. Yeah, you see that, um, Janiqua, You tuned in? Um, not really. I actually fell asleep. <laughs> around oh that wow. Time. Okay. Well, you know. <laughs> You're in the same boat with me. No, you know, it's just a regular <laughs> thing. Let me just. <laughs> y'all just. <laughs> y'all just. Uh, y'all just like to hurt my feelings sometimes. That that's how it goes. You know, I am boring. But to those who did stay awake and actually listen, what made the episode interesting is that I brought two of my time traveling friends along, Huey and Rick. Your shout out to them. What made it embarrassing was when I accidentally got us stuck in an alternate timeline where all those inventions didn't exist and uh, it really wasn't the best. So let's thank those people. Let's give them a round of applause. I have a live studio audience here. They're not live. They're just a bunch of people doing my bidding. Hey, can we give them a clap, please? Can we give those guys a clap? (laughs) Wonderful, wonderful black inventors out there. Wonderful. And uh, leave it to me to mess things up. You know, it's just an involuntary action at this point. But we were able to make it back, and that is allowing me to be here and tell you about the story that they're probably telling their friends about and hating me. So, yeah, that's the thing. Now, uh, before we continue with the show, we have that special section that most of you may know, but I'll explain it if you don't. It's called the Gold Star Question Section. Let's play. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay, basically, a riddle or a question will be asked to you, the listeners, and whoever calls in and provides the correct answer will receive what we call a gold star. It's not an actual gold star, but, you know, just imagine you get one. Two gold star questions will be asked every time the show airs. You have only one chance in giving the correct answer. Uh, Once you get win a gold star, you automatically get a shout out live on the air for your achievement. If you win three gold stars, you can suggest a topic you'd like to hear us talk about on the show. Remember, that topic must have some relation to information technology. If you win five gold stars, you can suggest a guest you'd like to hear us speak with on the show, and we tried our hardest to get them in here. And if you get eight gold stars, you can join us on the show to participate in the trivia section that we have sometimes. You are only allowed to answer one question per night to keep it fair. And now some of you are like, hold on, hold on, hold on. Dr. Ricardo Neal has been on the show three times and I don't hear him getting any gold stars. Well, you see, he kind of runs the organizations that sponsor this show, right? So I don't want to be like, okay, no, Mr. Neil, we're not having you on. Snip. All right, let's talk IT off of the ear. We, we, we can't have that. We can't have that. That would be very, very unfortunate. 
<laughs> I'm clearing my throat so much. I don't have COVID, guys. I don't. Uh, to join the activity, our numbers are 466-0989, 662-0989, and 762-0989 for the local numbers. I'll repeat that one more time. 466-0989, 662-0989, and 762-0989. The international numbers are 0333, that's four threes, come on, mate. Okay, 0333-344-0065 for the UK. 718-285-6984 for USA and for the Canadian people, 305-921-4619. So just call in and give your answers. The first gold star question for tonight is, y'all in the studio, please. It's a very easy one. Don't, don't, if you say oh, well, the answer, answer. No, 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 oh, no, no. Say the answer in your head. I, I know you answered <laughs> it. I know you would do something like that. So... The first question for tonight is, what is an alien's favorite place on a computer? We're starting late. You know, we're starting late. We're back in the studios. But what is an alien's favorite place on the computer? Can't wait to hear y'all answers. So what y'all do, just call in. We'll be nice. Well, I'll try to be. I'm joking. I'm joking. And when you win, you get your little gold star that you can put on your imaginary shirt. Right, Sanjiv? Okay, okay. And... Now, we still have time before we go to the break, so let's just do a little brief introduction. Janiqua, introduce yourself for the people who haven't heard you before, and then we go to Anthony, then Mr. Neil, and ba-boom. Um, okay, hi, I'm Janiqua Ezzel. I'm 17 years old, and I am a student at the Clarence Fitzroy Bryant College. Um, yeah, that's about it. <laughs> all right, that was quick, all right. <laughs> okay, my turn now, Matt? Okay, um, my name is Anthony Jeetlal, um, age 20. I attend CFBC. Um, my hobbies are graphic design. Get, uh, well, getting into my hobbies is going to be graphic design. I'm more into like PC gaming and stuff like that. Mr. Neil don't like me gaming. <laughs> <laughs> but if I'm, not if I'm not doing that, I'm grinding, going on work, um, fixing cars and stuff like that with my dad. Um, that's basically it. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, uh, yeah. Um, Dr. Ricardo Neal. I'm lecturer at CFBC. I lecture in at the technical division where we do information technology at the associate's degree level. Um, it's a 24 course, 24 s course um, accredited um, area. Uh, I'm the author of one of the largest IT textbooks in the Caribbean called CSEC Information Technology in Focus. I also author the only algorithm workbook within the region. Um, my resume is long. Let me see if I can. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I'm the founder of the Senkids Navy's Robotics Association, the mentor and founder of the Senkids Robotics Team from 2017 leading up to 2020. Um, I'm also the founder and one of the directors in the IITAE Association. Um, IITAE is currently um, providing uh, online assistance for... Mm -hmm a few high schools. One of the schools would be ICCS. So they're fully online using IITA. So just want to make that make that clear so the public know what is going on. So huh? wait. Oh, sorry to cut you off. But as mm -hmm. you said, you had like two, sorry, two or three um, books. Yeah, three. So well, I just mentioned two. I'm pretty, sure, <laughs> I'm pretty sure anyone that goes to high school, they probably have that book just laying down there. Yeah, the, it's the especially the, the, the CSEC um, Information technology one. It's a huge book. So a lot of people are afraid of the book because they say it is too <laughs> large. But the book was written to actually um, cover from grade 7 leading all the way up to 5th to, um, form. As a matter of fact, funnily, mm. there are some, even some of the bookstores throughout the region asked me if I could inform the publisher if they could put it in two. <laughs> 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 but, um, but when I look on some of the other books, some of like the science book, they are la they are, I think they are almost the same size. So Very I'm much. like, you know, why should I, you know, so you know make it smaller? But mm. again, <laughs> 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 again, the reason why the book is that large, because if w once you, once you open the pages, you will realize that there are space to take notes. Uh -huh. So it's designed in such a way where you have sections that you can write in. You know, sometimes you're in uh -huh. high school, you're in class and the teacher says something, um, you can, you know, you can just, you, sometimes students just jot it down somewhere. Yeah. So we provide a space in it so they could just jot down stuff. You know, so that is the unique thing. As a matter of fact, when the book, um, I think the book was launched in 2016, and at that time, 
um, a number of persons, especially in with, with, within Guyana, oh. um, actually purchased the book. Almost all the bookstores in Guyana had had that book. Um, and then we had about uh, about twelve or thirteen other Caribbean countries that has the book actually um, in use. We're actually working on an updated version because CXC would have made some changes, so we have to make some changes. All right, so, so all right. Hands are full. <laughs> CXC got their hands full, just like all the students got their hands full studying. But uh, when we get back, we're going to, you know, do what we're supposed to do, talk IT, and uh, just have a great time and in the studio. So we'll be right real soon. We'll be right real soon. Better music, better talk, better radio. I'm listening, honey. I am listening. 98.9 Win <laughs> FM. <laughs> Join us on WinFM every other Tuesday for Let's Talk IT from 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. to hear our hosts, Naeem Richardson and Janiqua Esdale, speak about different aspects of social media, technology, and STEM advancements in youth. Tune in, ask questions, and Let's Talk IT. Brought to you by the St. Kitts Nevis Robotics Association. Today. Glad you could join us today. We okay. got it with no time to play, with no time to wait. So we're gonna keep up the pace. Okay. Hey, uh, most likely, y'all don't know about IT. I mean, like most of the old folks, they don't know. Yeah, I, I get what you're saying, bro. You know what I'm saying? Today we're talking IT. Yeah, okay, hey, yeah. Today we're talking IT. Yeah, alright, ooh. We're yeah. gonna keep it live. Okay. Learning yeah. here is like hey. when we're talking hey. IT. Hey. IT. Yeah. Hey. Uh. Today we're talking IT. No, your computers, okay. this for the viewers. Today we're talking IT. We are the tutors, we okay. got the humor. Okay. Yeah. Today we're uh. talking IT. Okay. Yeah. Learning here is like. Learning here when is likely. Uh. So let's IT. start IT. Yeah. Welcome back. Welcome back. I'm still in the studio. Um, people from my high school will probably guess what I tried to do there. But all right, everyone, welcome back to Let's Talk IT. I'm your host for tonight, Ryan. 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 <laughs> my bad, my bad, my bad. We're going a little crazy. You know, this is the first time I'm out of the house. So I'm joking. It's not. But um, I'm your host for tonight, Naeem Richardson. Where we last left off, I asked for the what? I asked the first gold star question riddle to our listeners. And to answer, just give us a call. I'll just go run over the local numbers, 466-0989, 662-0989, and 762-0989. So the first gold star question, again, is what is an alien's favorite place on the computer? Just call in. Don't be shy. I'm not Simon Cowell. Won't judge you too hard. I'm kidding. I mean, just call in and do your best. But um, I don't. I don't think anyone should get that one wrong, you know? Uh, what y'all think about that, Sanjay? You 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 here in the studio and you helping me out. What do you think about that one? Should be easy, pretty easy. I mean, it is pretty. Well, you got on a mask, dog. You got me out here thinking. <laughs> I, mean, I, that I I might be the one infected. I'm not. I'm not. But uh, okay. So <clears throat> today we're talking IT. And as we know, the internet and the world wide web. Y'all know these terms. Having access to the internet is so common in today's modern world. <laughs> uh, most of you are probably online listening right now to all those on the Facebook and so yes this is the voice that probably you get annoyed by every time 7 o'clock to 8 o'clock every other Tuesday hi this is me this is the face you can put to the voice um, so y'all are probably using the internet to listen to the show or you are old fashioned and you got the radio nothing wrong with having the radio I just never used one <laughs> um Thank you for tuning in, by the way. But we all, if not most of us, use the internet, and it's nice to see how far it's come. Now, before we go any further, no, I'm not going back in the past today because Rick and Huey, they kind of got a problem with me messing up the whole time machine. So they're like, I'm got to be in the studio for this one. So it's just going to be me today. <clears throat> yeah. Oh, y'all still here listening? After hearing it was just with me? Okay, thanks. Thank you. Thank you. It really... <sighs> Kids... Thank you. I really appreciate it. I really, I really appreciate it. Anyways, let's get into it. Let's get into it. So first, we got to answer the question. What is the World Wide Web? Mr. Neil, I give you 30 seconds to run your definition to see if it's better than mine. Go. <laughs> um, the World Wide Web is a group of networks within networks, and we can keep on going on and on and on and on. 
a number or a series of networks. Mm. And that's what a basic definition for the internet is. All right, so now we have that basic definition. I'm gonna go to try and, uh, you know, get a little bit more smarty with it. Miss Neil is smarter than me. I'm not saying I'm smarter than him. But <laughs> I have uh, the World Wide Web. So the dream of a universal information database was popping. Wow, I told Sanjeev not to say that and it's in my script. Crazy. Especially <laughs> in the late 1940s, this idea was something that everybody wanted to have. To link pieces of information that could be found quickly by a user was seemingly a fantasy. Enter the 21st century, where technology systems couldn't make this dream a reality. Whoa, okay. The official description defines the web as a wide area, hypermedia, information retrieval initiative aiming to give universal access to a large universe of documents. In simpler terms, it is an internet-based computer network that allows users on one computer to access information stored on another through a series of interconnected Oh, hold on, hold on. I think I think we have a caller. Do we? Do we? I'm I'm new in the studio. Okay. Ka boom. What am I yeah, pressing? Press mm-hmm. Yeah. And then press this. Mm-hmm. All right. <laughs> okay. Let's act like I know what I'm doing. Okay, caller, you should be here now, right? Are you? Oh, I took them off. Wow, I'm rude as a host. Wow, I'm terrible in the studio. You see, you see, this is this is why I'm stuck at home. You know, I, I don't I don't be in the studio messing up things. You can call back. That doesn't that doesn't deduct your chance. You can call back, and I'll probably get you on. Or I'll have the guy in the studio do it because that's his job, not mine. Uh, what what was I saying? Yes. So the webs. Oh, they're back. Hello, madam or sir, that I probably just cut off. If it's somebody new, how are you doing? Good, good. I'm doing good. Okay, okay. This is, this is the one you just cut off. Oh, oh, uh, <clears throat> my bad, G. My bad. <laughs> uh, so you ready to give in your answer? Yes, I, I know the answer. The answer is a space bar. Okay, all right, all right. Let me, let me, let me hey, hit man. you with the little... Good job, my friend. The answer <laughs> is a space bar. The alien's favorite place on a computer. We don't know if aliens exist, but it probably is there. Um, would you like to say your name, sir? Yes, um, this is Tishon Thomas mm-hmm, of mm-hmm. SKN IT Solutions. Ah, all right, all right. Sanjeev, did you write that down? Yeah. You Did Did you? Yeah, in my head. <laughs> <laughs> what is, what is? Re- Repeat it one more time, sir. Repeat it one more time. Tishon Thomas of SKN IT Solutions. All right, Mr. Keyshawn Thomas of SK and IT Solutions, you have your first gold star. How does it feel? Well, I actually was looking for some more um, intellectual um, <laughs> questions. Yes, yeah, some more some more intellectual conversation from our cream of the crop in IT. Uh, I know Mr. Neil, and I've had some <laughs> intern in an IT company. Yes. And I'm seeing a lot of fun, but I'm not seeing a lot of business or monetization of ideas. Oh, don't uh, worry, don't worry. We're, we're getting into that. We're getting into we're that real soon. Get into that. Okay, get <laughs> there, get there, because I'm, I'm listening, and, you know, we want, we want to compete. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Well, um, have a good day, okay? Okay, lovely. Yeah. Do-do-do. <laughs> All right. You see, I know what to hang up, but I don't know how to put the people on the call. <clears throat> Let's get into it. So the web's implementation follows uh, what is called a client-server model. So the user, the client, relies on a program to connect to a remote machine which stores the data, which is the server. So a client shows a browser like Google Chrome or Firefox knows how to present the data, but not what its origin is. The data is coming from a server which knows how to extract the data, but they are ignorant of how it's presented to the user. So the World Wide Web began in March of 1989 at CERN. Long story short, CERN is a meeting place for physicists all around the world who collaborate on complex physics, engineering, and information handling projects. So we all need the web. Uh, 
to come out. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, new headphones? Upgrade. Hello. <clears throat> Sorry. So we all need the web system developed, and CERN had both the financial and computing resources necessary to start this project. So CERN used their existing hardware and software as blueprints to help develop what we know as the web. Then we meet Tim Berners-Lee. Tim had the idea of using the already existing hypertext technology to provide a single user interface to many large classes of stored information, such as reports, notes, databases, computer documentations, and online system helps. So in 1989, Tim developed a hypertext markup language. Most of you would know that as HTML. And with this technology, Tim was able to help CERN and they were able to create the World Wide Web as we know it. In 1991, CERN introduced the World Wide Web to the public and it took off. A year later, the first audio and video recordings were released over the internet. Fun fact, 1992 is the year the term surfing the net also became popular. So what was the reason for the success of the web? You know, It is believed that CERN's attitude towards the development of the project as soon as the basic outline of the web was complete, you know? CERN had already made the source code publicly, publicly available. You see, CERN as an organization always promoted collaboration with academic and commercial parties since the early developments of the web. And by doing so, it got millions of people involved with the growth of the World Wide Web. I'll just call it WWW if I have it in the script anymore. But because of the instinctive nature of the hypertext language, many inexperienced computer users were able to just connect to the network. And due to the simplicity of the hypertext markup language, HTML, users were able to create different interactive documents. And this only helped to further expand the web. The web provided a way to interconnect computers running different operating systems, example, a Windows and a Mac computer, and the web displayed information created in a variety of existing media formats. So, big W's to the people at CERN and Tim Berners-Lee. Can we get a yay, kids? Indeed, yes. Um, for those who don't get the lingo, uh, W is a common term for win and web stats with. <clears throat> Anyways... When we get back from this uh, little break that we're going to have shortly, we'll dive a little bit more into the history of the internet and begin our discussion with Dr. Ricardo Neal on the importance of cyber independence. But before we go in, Mr. Neal, Anthony, I'm going to ask you all briefly, briefly. Did you learn anything new about that whole conversation about CERN and the web? To be honest, man, we did this before. Oh, yeah. Who is we? Remember we had an assignment to oh, well. the CERN. <laughs> Well, you know, the people on the, the uh, radio, they don't go to the same class. Yeah, but you're right, you're right. But, like, I can could, I could tell you, man, the stuff you told me, I knew. Okay, sure. well, that's good. Reinforcing information. Mr. Neil, did I do a good job at that? Yeah, I did a good job. I th think we need to have a whole series called um, Naeem's Classroom, <laughs> you know? <laughs> I don't think anybody would tune into that. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'd probably Naeem's lose a lot to of give viewers. information to the public. Information is always important. Mm. Um, so that is a vital um, component there because mm -hmm. I'm sure somebody out there learned something that they that they didn't know. Yeah, before. so before mm -hmm. we uh, go off, I'm just going to go over a few plot points. Like I said, the web was introduced to the public in the year 1991. Okay, students, let's write that down. HTML stands for Hypertext Markup Language. All right. Tim Berners-Lee created HTML and the World Wide Web project began in the year of 1989 at CERN. CERN is no longer the name. I think it's the European something something. But just remember, 1989, CERN started the World Wide Web project. And with the help of Tim Berners-Lee, and by 1991, the web was able to come out to the public. And with the simplicity of how hypertext is created... Everyone was able to create their own documents, upload their own media, create their own websites, and the web just ended up expanding. Like Mr. Neil said, we're interconnected, so we go from one point to one point to one point to one point, and it's been since 1991, and we're in 2020, so that is a pretty large web. But when we get back, we'll talk briefly on the history of the internet and cyber independence. So, we'll see you soon. We'll see you soon. Yeah. 
Join us on WinFM every other Tuesday for Let's Talk IT from 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. to hear our hosts, Naeem Richardson and Janiqua Esdale, speak about different aspects of social media, technology, and STEM advancements in youth. Tune in, ask questions, and Let's Talk IT. Brought to you by the St. Kitts Nevis Robotics Association. Better music, better talk, better radio. I'm listening, honey. I am listening. 98.9 Win FM. How was your day? Glad you could join us today. We had it with no time to play, with no time to waste, so we're gonna keep up the pace. Okay. Hey, uh, most likely, likely. y'all don't know about IT. Nope. I mean, like, most of the old folks, they don't know. Yeah, I, I get what you're saying, bro. You know what I'm saying? Today we're talking IT. Yeah, okay, hey, yeah. Uh. Today we're talking IT. Yeah, alright, ooh, uh. Yeah. We're gonna keep hey. it live. Okay. Learning yeah. here is like hey. when we're talking hey. IT. Hey. IT. Yeah. Hey. Today we're talking IT. No computers, this okay, for the viewers. Yeah. Today we're talking IT. We are the tutors, we okay, got the humor. Okay. Yeah. Today we're talking uh, IT. Okay. Learning there is like. Learning here Learn is likely. IT. Uh, so let's IT. start IT. Yeah. Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Talk IT. Where we last left off, we spoke about the origin of the World Wide Web and how Tim Berners-Lee and the people at CERN were able to revolutionize the world of technology. Um, let me just go over that briefly, the, the main points, one more time. In 1991, CERN introduced the web to the world and it took off publicly. Because of the simplicity of the hypertext markup language, people were able to create different web documents, different, um, what's it called? Uh, <clears throat> websites and it became a large interconnected network but as we promised we'd be back and we talk about the speak speak about the history of the internet itself and mention a few dates in time that really left a mark in history but before we get into it it's time for the second gold star question everybody so um shout out to mr Keyshawn for winning the first question of the night I decided since I'm back in the studio, I'm going to start off with a little easy questions for those listeners. But we'll, they'll get harder over time. Pause. The second question is, I have keys, but do not lock. I have a space, but no room. And you can enter and come in. What am I? It's real simple. I have keys, but do not lock. I have space, but no room. And you can enter, but not come in. What am I? Just some light. So to answer, give us a call on our local numbers, 466-0989, 662-0989, 7620989. Anyways, let's get back to the show. So as we mentioned, in the year 1992, the first audio and video were distributed over the internet. And the phrase, surfing the internet, became popularized. So let's start the timeline there, 1992. In 1994, Yahoo was created by Jerry Yang and David Philo, two electrical engineering graduates from Stanford University. And that is kind of crazy because most of us know Yahoo, especially when Google Chrome just randomly decides to switch your search engine from Google to Yahoo and you have to go and reset your settings and open up your bro. I'm sorry. I just hate when it does that. It really upsets me. It really does. But Yahoo was shown to the world in 1994. The first online dating site, Match.com, launched in 1995. And I know some of you listeners know about Match.com. I'm talking about a few of the older ones. I wasn't born them time, so I wouldn't know about it. But it's a crazy site. And, oh, I also was told to say this on the air. Just remember to attend your classes on Monday from 2.35 to 3.35 at DuPont Jewelry for males who get in bite. I'm joking. If anybody <laughs> knows what I mean, <laughs> then I'm sorry I had to say. I, I couldn't talk about dating with, without talking about that. But most of you listening know what's going on. But let's get back to IT. You know hear I me? Mean? <laughs> the popular streaming service we all know today, Netflix, was founded by Reed Hastings and Mac Randolph as a company that sends users DVDs by mail in 1997. 
And you guys are like, DVDs? Hold on, hold on, hold on. DVDs, but Netflix don't stream. And Mr. Neil, don't get upset when I'm looking at what DVD means once again. Digital <laughs> versatile disc. I just had to make sure I was right. So, yes, they send digital versatile disc instead of streaming. But, you know, as we evolve technology, streaming became uh, more popular. So, Netflix was pop, um, published, not like a book, but shown to the public in 1997. So let's just backtrack in the timeline real quick. 1992, the first audio and video were distributed over the, the internet. 1994, Yahoo was created. 1995, Match.com launched. And in 1997, Netflix showed its face to the world. Yes, Netflix is older than most of us. It's older than me. And yes, they use DVDs, like I said. A year later, in 1998, <clears throat> the Google search engine was born, changing the way users engage with the internet. Just like how they changed my search engine to Yahoo every two weeks. But it was born in 1998. We fast forward a couple of years. Let me do the math. Hold on. 1998 to 2004. Six. Somebody can call in and do the math for me. Six. Six? It is? It is? You really? 1998 to 2004. Yeah, well, you see, I've been out of school for a while, so I don't... <laughs> It probably is six. So let's say it's six. But fast forward to 2004, Facebook came online and the era of social networking began. Mr. Neil, you still use Facebook? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I just use it to scroll down on my timeline for memes at this point. But I remember when I made an account back in, what, 2012, maybe? Uh, I was dumb by <laughs> I don't know why I was doing, but back in 2004, Facebook was crazy to the public. And 2006 came along and then Twitter launched. And two things these sites have in common is the level of toxicity you will find from just going on a single post if you go in the comments. If Am I right, Janiko? You be, you be on Twitter all the time. You know what I'm talking about, right? <laughs> I don't really check the replies anymore. You know, you just... Yeah, chaos. it's not good for your health. It's yeah, not good for your health, yeah? <laughs> you can be clung for almost anything and people just people ain't nice and but hey i don't do it you know because the first episode of the show was about cyberbullying anyway Amen. then we move over to the year 2013 and google unveiled google assistant a voice activated personal assistant program marking the entry of the internet giant into the smart computerized assistant marketplace oh. so you know we got alexa and the series Google Assistant. Cortana. Was, mm -hmm, yeah, Cortana as well. Uh, for those who don't know what Cortana is, Cortana is uh, the voice sis assistant for the Windows and so. And now look at us in 2020. The internet has changed so much over the course of time that some people argue that it's changed for the worse. But we can't deny its importance in our society. Being able to gain information with the press of a button or being able to speak to family and friends who are miles away in real time and being able to stream movies and TVs for entertainment, the internet has truly come a long way. And in the year of 1996, there was the Declaration of Cyber Independence or the Declaration of Independence of Cyberspace. Mr. Neil, I, I know I, mm -hmm. I, when I said that, you, you, your face probably just lit up a little bit because you've been waiting for us to talk about this for a while. Yes. But we'll, get, we'll get to it. We'll get to it. <laughs> and uh, I know you've been waiting for me to just be quiet at this point. Hopefully not. But I joke. <laughs> and the declaration was written by John Perry Barlow on a clunky Apple laptop. And he typed out one very controversial email. The Declaration of Independence of Cyberspace. So, Mr. Neil, uh, we got a little bit of time. So, can you briefly, when I say briefly, because we, we'll talk about this more in depth when we get back. But mm. can you briefly explain what cyber independence is as before we go to the break and we can continue this right. conversation? So, I just want to say um, condolences to Vivisha Watley's, to Vivisha Watley, um, her father passed. She is a um, member of the St. Kitts and Nevis Rob Robotics team and also the Robotics Association. Um, I was able to attend the funeral today, so I just want to say it publicly so, you know, she's listening. I'm sure she's listening, so she will hear that um, we are, we express our condolences. But um, I want to, the ci cyber independence, I want to look on cyber independence from the perspective of the Caribbean region, owning what we use online. And that's the perspective I want to take it from. Um, outside of the normal 
um, um, perception of what cyber, cyber independence is. Now, what we found, what we find happening over time is that um, we we are indulging using a lot of application that you know that are owned by other persons, or we pay subscriptions to these applications. But very rarely you find that you know we are able to develop our own and we own in our own, especially in this um, um, day, day and age. So I want to have a conversation around that area. You know, how can we become independent within the um, the region? Oh, I understand. I understand. Sounds. I was listening. I was listening. <laughs> trust me. Trust me. But you've been uh, advocating. I want to say that's the right <laughs> word for us yeah. to talk about this for a while because of its importance and mm -hmm. how you feel like it could help the federation and the people who are here to learn about the information technology a little bit more. And uh, can I just ask, other than the importance, uh, why? You know. Yeah. Um. Why? You know, I was in a meeting once, and uh, we had a conversation about <laughs> using various applications for various reasons. And um, a gentleman in the meeting said, uh, we need to purchase subscription here, there, 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 and so forth. And I said, we need to own our own. And the, the, the conversation went like this. Why, re why should we reinvent the wheel? Hmm. I was coming. Why should we reinvent the wheel? The wheel is already out there. Why? Why would you want to reinvent the wheel? Um, then my question, you know, was, who owns the wheel? And I think that's a that, that's a question that we need to answer within the Caribbean region. Who owns the application that we use? Hmm. That we use on a daily basis. Um, we use different um, spreadsheet. You know, ex, you know, um, Word document, PowerPoint. Who owns that? Do we do we own it? Um, and and are we thinking along the line, especially in this in, in this in this in this um, dispensation? Let's say dispensation <laughs> um, with with all of these changes. I think the, 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 what what should happen now is that we are looking at um, owning our our place within the cyberspace, and we own these things. As opposed to we find ourselves outsourcing, outsourcing, outsourcing. The mm -hmm. conversation has um, has to change. And why? I think you said why earlier. Yeah. Because of data security. Um, data security. A lot of times we hear of companies losing um, cu customers' information. You know, a number of information is just lost, and nobody knows what happened to it. You know, um, I feel within Saint Kitts and Nevis, we can be the the country. Mm -hmm. That actually start the revolution where everything that we are using, we we actually own it. Um, we we have our own application for Word. We have our own Excel. We have our own PowerPoint, and that can be fed back into the common one that we have. But we own it, and and th and that is the important thing. Um, you know, so um, the discussion of why we. Re, um, reinventing the wheel that kind of conversation you know we we have to step back and look at that and say you know we need to own our space within the cyberspace we need to own, own that um we have amazon a number of persons are on amazon and they are using amazon amazon has made billions of dollars during this um covid crisis indeed it has billions of dollars not from me though, know, and we're all spending <laughs> spending you know and 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 that itself and and i'm not saying you know nothing is wrong with amazon you know, amazon is an excellent company of course a brilliant company what i'm saying here is that just like what i push at the tertiary level is that students must develop a sense of owning their own and that in itself will actually translate back into the Caribbean region within St. Kitts and Nevis, where we're able to start even if, 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 um, companies that, that actually develop products, and these products are actually sold. The thing, the thing about the online space is that it is an open space, and I'm sure Mr. 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 Thomas, who, who called in from SKN Solutions, I know him really, really well, <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, and, and, and I, I know that I am preaching um, a, a part of that you know, gospel for him. You know, so, you know, we're we are able to own our own. Now, um, the other question would be, where do we start with this? 
Where do oh. we start that on your own? Well, uh, one of the I know, I know yes. you're talking. I know you're talking. <laughs> but yeah. I don't. I want. Hopefully, you got enough mm-hmm. to, to talk about later, right? Yeah, we are. We are. I we mean, are, like, yeah. I don't, you okay? Well, continue a little bit more. Right. A little bit more. So, um, the question is, where do we start by owning our own? Um, one of the things that we need to establish within Saint Kitts. Uh, and I'm watching my time that I have here. <laughs> 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 I think next thing, guys, you, you um, need, need to pull me on earlier. Um, uh, you know, one of the things that we, we, one of the places that we need to start from, we need to start from um, a ICT committee. Um, if you notice, we have different committees within um, the space in Saint Kitts, but we have no ICT committee. There's no committee that drives and push um, for policy to change within the within the ICT space, and also to um, advise those persons who are even um, looking on investing within the the, the, um, the, the whole um, um, IT realm. So, so all of that fall under the banner, under the banner of cyber independence. Mm. And, and I deliberately use the word independence because um, that word is used a lot to say that you are free. <laughs> Indeed, but indeed. when you examine it, you're not really free. Yeah, right? so you're not really free. So you find yourself within a, a you know a tight spot there. Because if I'm paying subscription for for a product outside of Asia, I'm I'm not free. Yeah. Well, uh, we we no, can I'm talk about that a little bit more mm-hmm. when we get back from the break. Thank you, Mr. Neil, for holding up some time. I was I was getting some stuff <laughs> in the studio. Really appreciate it. Hey, uh, cover your mouth. I'm joking. <laughs> well, we'll be back. We'll be back after the break, and we'll see you guys soon. Better music, better talk, better radio. I'm listening, honey. I am listening. 98.9, 98. Win, Win FM. FM. Join us on Win FM every other Tuesday for Let's Talk IT from 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. to hear our hosts, Nain Richardson and Janiqua Esdale, speak about different aspects of social media, technology, and STEM advancements in youth. Tune in, ask questions, and let's talk IT. Brought to you by the St. Kitts Nevis Robotics Association. Today. Glad you could join us today. We okay. got it with no time to play, with no time to wait. So we're gonna keep up the pace. Okay. Hey, uh, most likely, most likely. y'all don't know about IT. Nope. I mean, like most of the old folks, they don't. Know. Yeah, I, I get what you're saying, Brian. Today we're talking IT. Yeah. Okay. Hey, yeah. Today we're talking IT. Yeah. All right. Ooh. Uh, we're yeah. gonna keep hey. it live. Okay. Learning yeah. here is like hey. when we're talking hey. IT. Hey. IT. Yeah. Hey. Today we're talking IT. No computers, this okay. for the viewers. Today we're talking IT. We are the tutors, we got okay. the humor. Okay. Yeah. Today we're talking uh, IT. Okay. Learning there is like. Learning here is likely. IT. Uh, so let's start uh, IT. Yeah. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the show. Let's talk IT. I'm your host, Naim Richardson. I'm joined by Janiqua Ezdel, Anthony Gital, and Dr. Ricardo Neal in the studio with me. <clears throat> um, yeah, so before we went to break, we, well, not even me, Dr. Neil began to briefly talk about the Declaration of Independence of Cyberspace. I'll just call it the Declaration of Cyber Independence. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, Mr. Neil, as you said before, but if people are just tuning in, no, you have strong feelings about this important topic for yeah. the Caribbean region. Well, mainly our federation, I believe. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, and, and, and it's not only, um, and for those who are just coming on, you know, we're, we're, we, we, we're looking at, we want to start the whole conversation of cyber independence. Um, we have countries who, you know, seeking for their independence. And, 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 and we have persons who are championing the cause behind that to say we want to be free and so forth. Um, and what we are saying, what I'm saying from my perspective, from where I sit right here, um, under the banner of the Robotics Association, <laughs> well, I'm saying that we need to be free within the cyberspace. We need to own our own. And we want to start the conversation from there. We want to own our own. Um, we find that a lot of um, dependence is on different third party companies to create softwares, applications, and all these different um, var- var- um, variations that we use you know, to access the internet or, 
or, or, or things that we use within offices, uh, we find that we actually outsource them. Um, I'm a strong champion that we need to start our own. And so that is why, again, as I said before, um, at the tertiary level, we push for that. Mm. Uh, Janiko, you wanted to say something? Um, yes, I wanted to talk about um, another aspect of the importance of cyber independence and that it is just empowering um, for us. Um, I know a lot in the States, there's a lot of pushing for supporting black businesses and empowering youths into starting your own companies and stuff like that. So I think that starting our own cyberspace in the Caribbean is a good step into getting independence because you know we depend on places like America, Europe and the rest of the world a lot for stuff and once we are able to build that independence from the rest of the world we as a whatever it is uh, I don't know <laughs> uh, archipelago I guess <laughs> will start to grow and be able to reach new limits and actually as a whole not just like one island and that island be on the same level as the rest of the world rather than having ourselves being held back right. by being yeah, dependent on them yeah, yeah so, and, and, and uh, the, 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 the and and yes you're right and one, one of the things that we we must understand is that cyber independence um will encourage growth it, it, it develop growth within a country because mm. uh, if i know that that particular application is developed within within a the country the finances stays within so the finance is not going out it's staying in because we're able to leverage that we're able to create our own and so yes within the states a lot of talk about the whole black black you know black Life matter and supporting black business and so forth you know which is actually good right yes. um which is good you know but within the region we we here within the region have to look at how can we develop our own and own our own and not just talk because they say talk is cheap and you know, a, lot, a lot of persons talk. Yeah, <laughs> but, no, I, 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 could, I could do it for that. You see what I'm saying? But we're talking about action. We're talking about getting get, getting down to the grass root and getting things actually done. Um, you know, so that is where I'm coming from. Um, I'm, I'm sure that this is not a one-show discussion. The show will continue mm-hmm, next week probably. also. But, um, but that is something that we need to be looking towards. How can we be cyber independence in this time and where do we start you know i think we need to start at um the commissioning or the development of a ict committee yeah um that will champion that cause to make sure that we start to look on policies that will govern um the applications that we use um so as i did a little research real quick i actually have the written declaration of independent declaration of cyber independence by Mm -hmm. john perry ballow in front of me Um, It's not that long, so I'll just try to read it for all the listeners. It says, Governments of the industrial world, you wear giants of flesh and steel. You weary giants of flesh and steel. I come from cyberspace, the new home of mind. On behalf of the future, I ask you of the past to leave us alone. You are not welcome among us. You have no so... What? Sovereign... Sovereignty where we gather. We have no elected government, nor are we likely to have one. So I address you with no greater authority that, that, than that which which I need my glasses again, my guy, um, <laughs> than that with which liberty itself always speaks. I declare the global social space we are building to be naturally independent of the tyrannies you seek to impose on us. You have no moral right to rule us, nor do you possess any methods of enforcement we have true reason to fear. Governments derive their powers from the cons- consent of the governed. You have neither solicited nor received ours. We did not invite you. You do not know us, nor do we nor do you know our world. Cyberspace does not lie within your borders. Do not think you can build it as though it were public as though it was a public construction project you cannot it is an act of nature and it grows itself through our collective actions you have not engaged in our great and gathering conversation nor did you create the wealth of our marketplaces you do not know our culture our ethics our unwritten codes that already provide our society with more order than you could that could be attained by any of your impositions i can see where this was controversial yeah because you see he was he's speaking from the perspective of um, operating online independently, mm-hmm. and so that, that that's a perspective um, he is speaking from. 
but while while that is a good lesson for us to say you know um he's saying that we should stand by ourselves and we should be able to function because what we find happening is that a lot of persons within the U within the united states trying to put laws to restrict a lot of things online um so you know he's speaking from that angle but for us within the region i'm speaking from the perspective of we owning the technologies that we use mm. we own them and and so some person might say that is a long way off um it starts first with a conversation um, i remember when we started a number of projects at, at the college they were all an idea first and they manifest into reality a reality and we have you know a number of things operating right right now because of, of some of the conversation that we have you know so we want to champion the cause of we begin to start the conversation and then move into practicality where we need to look on let's have our own mm. <laughs> let's own our own let's have our own um microsoft right let's have our own you know zoom application yeah. let's 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 look into developing our own and we can therefore begin to even sell licensing from that product to other persons who are just starting the conversation yeah right so so from from that perspective you know because we the reality is that we we have to change um i am sure that a number of organizations and i'm coming i'm um, genuine i know you want to <laughs> say something <laughs> but 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 um i'm sure covid would have would have teach a lot of personal lesson um you know as in you have to change the, mm. there has to be there has to be some kind of change because if there's no change then you know we're going to f fall back in the ages indeed right Yes, Jenny, I know you were saying something. I don't want to <laughs> <laughs> take up too much of the time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, what was I going to say? No, I should, I don't tell me you are. <laughs> wait, wait, us. okay. Um, you were saying about mm -hmm. we have to start a conversation. And I want to expand on that point mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. what happens a lot is that people have ideas. Mm -hmm. People have things that they think. Mm -hmm. But once there is like nobody actually talking about it, you know, you feel like you're being dramatic. Like right, said, right, right. I want to start my own tech company mm -hmm. where I build computers in the Caribbean. And it's just like when you hear yourself said, I like, there are no tech companies in the Caribbean. So to actually do that, mm -hmm. it sounds impossible to you. But once right. you hear that other people have the similar ideas, mm -hmm. similar chain of thought, you know, you you feel a little you bit feel, more confident yeah, yeah, and indeed. you want to study and you want to make sure that you could mm -hmm. make this a reality because you know that you're going to have mm -hmm. actual support. So yes, a conversation, talking about it is important because it helps to encourage people to meet, mm -hmm. to take action to the situation. Yeah, and um, as we talked about Mr. Tim Berners-Lee earlier, how he created the hypertext markup language and it's... um. Most people will look at a, a website and be like, yo, I can't make this. Don't don't put yourself down, you know? It just, every, like everything, it takes time. And the hypertext markup language was made with the intention of having you a, a collaborative mm -hmm. effort. So it's, a, it's at your fingertips so you can go and create your things. Like, we have a lot of uh, new local online stuff, like mm -hmm. um, JAD is one yeah, that's Jad. working. Oh, uh, what's, mm -hmm. what's another one? 1869 Go. Eight six nine. Um, does, does eight, that, six, does that nine. Well, I think they have a, ver a variety of apps that they would have. Yeah, so support. like, yeah. not saying that everybody got to go create an app or create yeah. a website, but we should have people that can do that, you know, because mm -hmm. it is like, it, it is easy to be like, yo, uh, let me hop on uh, the Amazon site, you know, and you get your things from there. But then, um, as Mr. Neil says, that's like outsourcing in a sense, you know? Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah, yeah. Because we, we, we need to own our own. Um, um, for example, we have all of these social media that a lot of persons are on. You put all the data as, you put all the data on it and you you, you believe that everything is okay. <laughs> you tell yourself, oh, I am on TikTok and everything's cool. You know, <laughs> you, you tell yourself all these things and, and these kind of things. But um, in the business world, um, we need to own our own, you know, as opposed to keep on us and when you outsource it actually c costs a lot especially when you especially when you find yourself within a situation where you are tied to an organization and you have to be paying for maintenance and all this kind of stuff you know but if we own that thing ourselves if we if we are the owner we can actually sell subscription from that thing that we actually own you know so that that is kind of discussion that we want to actually have especially now um, to see if we can begin to get there 
um, as time goes by. Now, for those of you guys who know who know how how I operate, you know, once we start a conversation about something, something's gonna happen. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. yeah. So, <laughs> so, so, yeah. Bec- because there has to be a change. There has to be a change. And sometimes, if you're the lonely man in the jungle, jungle shouting that voice, you still shout. You know, until you actually get there. Yeah, so, I'm mm-hmm. very pr- profound. I, is that the word I want to use? Well, the whole conversation discussion was very informative. I just want to thank everybody for being here. And, you know, we're back in the studio. This episode was a little bit, you know, like I'm trying to learn the stuff here. But nevertheless, we had Mr. Ricardo Neal, Janiqua, Anthony and Sanjiv helping me out. So it came together and we learned a lot. Right. We learned about the history and cyber independence. And um, it's very informative, Mr. Neal. I'm sure you heard that a lot, especially on IATAE. <coughs> College know <laughs> what I'm talking about, but <laughs> thank you for joining me here tonight. For our listeners, we hope you all enjoyed yourselves and learned a little bit more about the world of technology. Join us at 7 p.m. every other Tuesday, and next time we speak, let's talk IT. Goodbye. You found the sound 98.9. Join us on Win FM every other Tuesday for Let's Talk IT from 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. to hear our hosts, Naeem Richardson and Janiqua Esdale, speak about different aspects of social media, technology, and STEM advancements in youth. Tune in, ask questions, and Let's Talk IT. Brought to you by the St. Kitts Nevis Robotics Association. Hey, 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 how was your day? Glad you could join us today. We had it with no time to play, with no time to waste, so we're gonna keep up the pace. Hey, uh, most likely, y'all don't know about IT. I mean, like, most of the old folks, they don't know. Yeah, I get what you're saying, right? Today we're talking IT. Yeah, okay, hey, yeah. Uh. Today we're talking IT. Yeah, all right, ooh, uh. Yeah. We're gonna keep it live. Okay. Learning yeah. here is like hey. when we're talking hey. IT. Hey. IT. Yeah. Hey. Today uh. we're talking IT. No, your computers, okay. this for the viewers. Today we're talking yeah. IT. We are the tutors, we okay. got the humor, okay. yeah. Today we're uh. talking uh. IT. Okay. Learning uh. here is like. Learning here we're is likely. Uh. IT. So let's start uh, IT. Yeah. Nine.